do that better if I practice it, but that was fun. <laughs> so good. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. So you asked for it, and we have the one and only undisputed demo king of all of YouTube, Mr. Pete Thorne. Happy to be here with you. Finally. Now, one of your other gigs is a sideman for awesome big artists and that whole bit, but you got to get the tones, right? That's part of the gig. It is for me a big part of the gig. Yeah, like um, I always take the sounds really seriously, uh, and yet it's really fun for me too. Like right. I love, you know, the, the, it's kind of the hobbyist part of it, like yeah. the, like analyzing how did they record this great guitar sound, sound or how did they, you know, how, how can I recreate it with my rig? Yeah. And it's sort of, I don't know, satisfying for me on like, just beyond guitar playing and stuff on just like a hobbyist level to like right. try and nail uh, the sound. And I guess that's now sort of, you know, leaked into my, you know, professional life. It's right. like, that works well for getting gigs because right. sometimes people want those sounds. So. Now you get paid for it. Uh, now I get paid for it, yeah. <laughs> but I was always into it when I was a kid. Yeah. I grew up in Canada and there was like a really, um, like steady, healthy cover band circuit. Oh, cool. There with a lot of bars that had rock and roll cover bands. Yeah. Playing. And the bands were really serious. About yeah. The, to the point where there was like tribute acts a lot. Like I remember, it, for instance, like an Alice Cooper tribute where right. the guy had the full on the snake. No and, way. Yeah, with the bow like, snake. Full and, in. and the full outfits and the whole, yeah, he was so <laughs> devoted to, you know, and, right. and, you know, a lot of my friends played in these bands and stuff and, you know, they would do like no perfect recreations of everything from, yeah. whether it was, you know, Van Halen or The Who or ACDC or Rush. Yeah. Uh, and it was a big deal to be able to nail the, the parts and, and the, the tones. And, and the, the sounds, sounds yeah. And the, the feel and all that. So so that was just kind of, I always grew up with that, I guess, around yeah. that element. And I guess that worked well later right. uh, for my sideman kind of career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to do something interesting. We're going we're gonna to pull two iconic guitar sounds, one that you have history with for sure. Well, both have history, but like you actually got to play one of the songs for real getting the sounds right and then we yeah. both have a mutual thing for van halen so we gotta, yeah we just gotta go there. <laughs> we gotta go there and we're gonna use the ua aux today which I, everybody hears me rave about this thing but it's i, I just yeah. i keep going deeper and deeper and love it more and more so anyways that's our aux plug but <laughs> go ahead it's such a great tool it's for so good. and it's really fun for as a as a kind of a a, a companion when you're trying to get, get this kind of thing going yeah. you know you need a certain reverb or yep. EQ and a certain cabinet and microphones and all that good stuff to get the tones um you know it it, it starts with your hands yeah. and then goes to the guitar and the, the pickups and all that good yep. stuff and then the effects you use and stuff but then of course the amplifier is a massive component but i'm gonna say that the it's 50 percent of the sound i mean beyond your hands okay yeah. your hands are the most yeah, important let's given, take your right? hands out of the yeah. equation the speaker cabinet and the way the cabinet was mic'd yep. and stuff it's 50 percent of the time yeah absolutely it really is because it's this massive filter yeah. on your overall guitar sound yep. that is just like this big rolled off, you yep. know, because if you've ever heard a guitar amp without a speak a guitar style speaker, yeah. it's the gnarliest sound ever. <laughs> it's just a, a little abrasive. It's a little abrasive. I don't I don't think guitar ever would have become a popular instrument <laughs> right, if right. we hadn't you yeah. know, been dealing with the rather low fi yeah. ten inch and twelve inch speakers yep. of the day that became the norm for guitar yeah. sound reproduction, which are really only work between like a hundred hertz and five K right. and have a steep roll off yeah. after that. So the the aux is just such a, a fun, you know, and 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 valuable tool, and uh, it just makes life so easy when you're trying to do a lot of this work and recreate some of these tones. You're yeah. gonna see it in a minute here. So we're gonna do we're gonna do Black Hole Sun, and then yep. we're just gonna generally broadly tackle some Van Halen. It's a big brush. And, yeah, <laughs> big broad brush of that because it's, it's just so fun. But um, totally. But yeah, so so we can get into it, and and we'll just kind of break down the rig every step of the way and show you how what every single like component does. Right. To get and no speakers sounds. were used. Everybody ready? <laughs> I was like, one, two, three, go. That's like, uh, do you remember Hounds and Friends? No. Hounds and Friends? Uh -uh. I was like, uh, Saturday Night Live. And right. I'm dating myself here, man, by this, like, the 90s. But we're going to pump you up. Maybe oh, we, yeah, exactly. Maybe I'll stand right, right yep. here. Yeah, that's right. Well, maybe I'll go right. over there. <laughs> over there. Yeah. He's got his pedal board over there. <laughs> um, okay, that's so. That's our intro. <laughs> <laughs> we're blooper real deep. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Uh, you obviously have experience with this sound. Yeah. You played it in the past. So we're, we're going Black Old Sun first. Where do yeah. you even start? Like, So with this sound, oh, I love, first of all, you know, just getting these tones. I mean, just going for it and trying to, I don't know, it's fun. It's like the hobbyist in me loves to get inside the tones and go, I wonder how they record right, this. Right. You know, and then you never end up doing exactly what was done on the record, right. of course, but you recreate it in your own way. So yeah. um, the interesting thing about Black Old Sun is that the intro 
is a little bit, it, yes, it's a rotary sound. There's the little da, 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 melody right. at the beginning, which I'm not actually going to play it. I'm just going to do the main sound yeah. in the verse because it's a little bit different. The sound in the intro is slide guitar, and there's actually a long delay okay. on the sound. Right. So if you're trying to recreate that sound, and there's overdrive on it, it's quite distorted. Yeah, right, it's, right. It's, so, you know, but yeah. it's got that Leslie rotary kind of thing going on. And I'm not even convinced it's the, it could be a, a roto vibe or something. It could have been a different setup. It sure. probably wasn't, but it, yeah. maybe it's just a distortion pedal in front of the Leslie or something. Yeah. But anyway, long delay slide part with more distortion than the body of the tune. Okay. And then when you get into the main, um, ver the verse of the tune and that iconic kind of rotary guitar sound, I know that was a real Leslie. Yeah. I've got a good story about it. Yeah, actually. tell the story. Yeah, it's okay. good. I'm going to tell a quick yeah, story yeah. about this. So, um, I believe it was on the gear page, a guy contacted me and said, Hey, I was just wondering if you thought that this was legit. I saw in Bellingham, Washington, that right. there's a Leslie cabinet for sale. And the guy, this is on a, a, a Craigslist ad. Yeah. And, it, and the guy, I guess, said that um, in the Craigslist ad that this is the Leslie that was used on Black Hole Sun that used it on Super right. Unknown. And, and I, so yeah, so it, it's so cool. So he sent me these photographs right. in the Craig's from the Craigslist yeah. ad and it had this Leslie cabinet that was like, had stickers all over it right. and stuff, kind of distinct. Yeah. And so I said, I don't know, let me look into it. So I emailed Chris right, right. and I sent him the photographs of the, of the cabinet. I said, does this look like the cabinet you used on? And he's like, he hits me back like 10 minutes. So he's like, Oh my God, that's it. No He's like, way. I think that's it. And he's like, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> So he hits the dude up on Craigslist, right. and, and I believe buys the Leslie. Oh, cabinet. that's freaking awesome! Yeah, and um, and the dude that had originally—I don't know if the dude—I don't know if he bought it out from under the guy that was right. gonna, that sent me the right. ad. That guy was jazz because yeah. he was just thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. somehow got right. Chris Cornell information that allowed it, him to reconnect with the cabinet that made this iconic. Guitar yeah, sound. for sure. That's, that's so neat. freaking cool. That's, when no, the, only on the internet. Only on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> right. and sometimes the internet can be really great for stuff like that. Yeah. Right? It's so cool. But anyway, so. Who, but you know, who knows what guitar was played and stuff? Yeah. I have no idea. But so when I set about doing it, um, the sound to me has a few elements. Um, number one, of course, it's the rotary thing. Right. But there's also a very mid rangey quality to yeah. it that allows it to really poke. It's yeah. not a real thick guitar tone. It's okay. got kind of a, a full mids. It's not real bright either. Right. So so getting the right mid range is key. Um, maybe that's like the way they mic the Leslie cabinet. They've maybe primarily focused on the horn or something yeah. of the, because, you know, in a Leslie cabinet, they'll sure, put the, the drum and yep. the horn and you can get a darker, yeah. kind of brighter sound. So whatever you're going to use, kind of focus on the, 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 to do the rotary sound, focus on the, on the horn. In most Leslie simulators, there'll be a control that allows okay. you to simulate the horn or the drum. Right. Okay. Um, so mid range and kind of that brighter. It's it's bright, but it's it's really like mid range on the on the on the horn. It's got because the Leslie cabinet's never real bright to me. It never so it's ice picking. I'm not really good with mid range and, and frequencies or whatever. But say somebody had yeah. What what would you boost to get more of that kind of a sound? Well, in a minute here, when I get into, it, I'll show you. But I'm using the EQ in the aux. Okay. And I've Which is it's freaking the mid band amazing. is yeah, it's great. I mean, it's <laughs> awesome. And the mid band was set at 900 hertz, kind it's of the awesome. upper mid band. <laughs> it's aux. Oh my god, did you say that? It's awesome. <laughs> Oh, Hashtag. We, we coined it here. You heard it here first. Yeah. All right. So anyways, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. That's okay. I like it. I like bad puns. It's cool. It's, uh, it's the iced tea talk. It's, uh, All right. Well, that's not puns. Is that puns? Yeah, kind of. That's a pun. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I need to go back to school. <laughs> I didn't do good in English, so I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll go with alliteration it. Alliteration and oxymoron right, and right, puns right. and the difference between everything. Oxymoron. Check yeah. you out. See your facts. I didn't even think that. That was... Oh, God. <laughs> I need coffee. Okay. You need to catch up. I had like four iced teas. So, here we go. All right. So, so um, 900 hertz is the is the okay. kind of upper mid band that right. the, the aux was set at. And I boosted that up about six or seven dB, and I thought that was just great. So, okay. I'm going to show you that in a okay, minute cool. here. Um, I'm using uh, basically, okay, so if, let's, let's talk about the signal chain just from the beginning to okay. the end. I'm coming out of my guitar basically. Um, running into my pedal board, which is I'll down here on the floor. Yeah, we'll get up some B-roll. It's down here on the floor. But the only thing I'm really using in the pedal board is the Mobius oh, from Strymon, which is a great modulation oh. pedal. 
that for, sound, the yeah. rotary thing, is worth the price of the Mobius. Yeah, originally from the Lex. <laughs> yeah, I so think. good. It's a great pedal. Yep. Um, you know, it's a really, really good sounding Leslie yeah. simulator. So, and it's just running in front of my amplifier in mono. I'm not doing a stereo uh, thing with with you know, it's stereo is coming later via the aux. It's okay. With the reverb right. and stuff. Spreads it out, all right? Yeah. So, so the so the Mobius is running into the front end of my amplifier over here, which is PT100. It's over here in my rack. So that's my signature sur amp into the clean channel. The clean channel is very fendery on okay. the amp. It's bit somewhere between a twin and a super. Okay. Um, in the circuit. So, and I've got the ch it set very clean. Yeah. And just kind of straight up. And um, what I'm doing then is coming out of the amp and running into the aux, which okay. is behind me right here. We can see it sitting over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm using the uh, a deluxe 112. Oh, okay. Uh, 112, right, right. Thing, uh, which is one of the cabinets I really yeah. quite like for clean stuff in yeah. the aux. Um, it's not too bright. It has a nice, like, full kind of mid-centric sort of right. tone without being like over. The, the other one I really like, and it's quite different, is the for clean stuff is the 410 uh, basement. Yeah, job. that is a good one. Yeah, a lot brighter awesome. though. Yeah, you know, it's got a bright kind of quality. Yep. yep. Uh, whereas the the 112 is is a is a sort of a warmer, darker. Yeah. You know, and yep. can be nice for single coil pickups, sure. things like that. For so sure. it just depends on what you're doing. But so. Um, so in the and we, we've got a camera running here on the screen, of course. So over aux here, cam. yeah, the aux cam. You can see on the uh, uh, on the, uh, the the screen here that I've got the one twelve up, and then I'm using a combination of a fifty seven and a, a uh, ribbon uh, one sixty microphone together. I like the one sixty. Like yeah. I know everybody does a Royer, but like that. Yeah. Seems to be one of my go-tos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like the 162. Um, and it, in, in the real world, I've got one sitting right there. Oh, okay. Set well, over you, of course you do. They're great. It's the <laughs> Hendrix microphone. Yeah, that's yeah. what. That's right. I discovered it. I'm like, because all yeah. the patches have that. Yeah. That uh, ribbon going. I was like, oh, okay. Let's yeah. Like. It's a little warmer. Yeah. And it's got a really great natural quality to it. And I'm kind of favoring it over the 57. Yeah. So the standard thing is, of course, you know, you're getting the cut. From the fifty-seven and the fullness right. and the natural from the from the okay uh, so um, so just in uh, and then I'm using some room mics too which is the condenser stereo set and I've got the lows rolled off a little bit so let's okay. just listen to the core guitar tone yeah this is this is there's no pedals on right now other than am I using no nope, I'm not even using my compressor I decided not to for this um, so this is basically the PT one hundred channel one clean sound uh, running into the one twelve aux virtual cabinet okay. you know. Okay. Great. Yeah, just a nice, warm, natural, clean sound. So yeah. I'm gonna mute the um, the room mic, and I'm gonna mute the ribbon. Here's just the 57 style mic. Okay, let's mute that and listen now to the uh, 160. To the sound, that's amazing. Just has a nice, yeah. natural, really natural quality, you know. Um, So that's a, that's a great sound. So that then the sounds nice, good, man. Yeah, that's really, a good sounding. Yeah. Nice. It's really yeah. just very fender yeah, and yeah. kind of you know got its thing. And this is just the bridge humbucker on my okay. guitar right now. Um, so with both the 160 and the 57, it's a very nice natural, yeah. clear, okay. and yet full, and kind of and, and has nice mids and stuff. You know. Right. Uh, Okay, now let's listen to the room mics. This is one of the greatest things about the aux is these room mics. I'm gonna mute the close mics and just listen to the room. Right. You know, so you get yeah. that, that beautiful kind of, this is, you know, stereo pair of condensers yeah. in the room kind of thing. Okay, so now let's bring the close mics back in. And now we've got our blended, you know, close and, and some room blended, quite a bit of room I'm using actually. Really, uh is one of the coolest features about the aux. I mean, that really like brings it to life. It's you know? one of the most special things about it, yeah. just having that. I, I was a big fan of, uh, for the last few years, the Oceanway Studios plugin it, yeah. from UA. Right. And this is evidently the same. It's not It's not Oceanway Rooms or anything, but it's right. a similar technology yeah. they're using to do the room. That's so good. It really is. Yeah. And, and getting that room sound thing is really, um, it's really fun. I mean, there's other, you know, um, terrific load boxes on the market. Some of them, you can you know, yeah. use this one all the time. There's other stuff out there. But one of the things that really is unique about the aux is the room mics. Yeah. And 
it's if you like doing room sounds, it's really fun. You can simulate it using reverbs in your yeah, DAW and stuff. Right. If you're using another type of load yeah. box or something, it's something that you can do. But it is one of the neat things about this unit. It's all integrated. Yeah, you know, for sure. So, uh, good. That I really enjoy about it, to be honest. So um, okay, so now we've got that going. So let's add the, the next the Leslie element. Okay. The rotary speaker yeah. element because that's the, that's kind of one of the most important things. You know, the tone without anything else of and the part in the verse sounds like this. Okay, so that's right. a good core clean yeah, tone. Yeah. But now we're gonna get into turning this guy on over here. Okay, and this is adding the the uh, the uh, rotary speaker sound from the Mobius. Okay, so that's really getting there now. Yeah. You know, it's that's right. that's got a lot of those. Yeah, I mean, that would be sure. fine if you actually just used that. Right. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to compare, and once again, we're not actually going to use tracks from the original music here, just out of respect to the bands, yeah. and that you know we don't want to put the original tracks in this video and stuff. But if you want to go dial them up on, you know, Spotify, or if you got them your music playlist yep. or whatever, go listen to the original, and you can be comparing it and being it with the tone in this video yeah. to see how close we get. You can but, find some of these tracks, uh, isolated tracks on YouTube too. Like, so any yeah. of these tracks, just search, you know, isolated guitar track, and sometimes you can find the actual guitar track by sure. itself, and it sounds freaking awesome. That Van Halen stuff is so good. It's really neat to hear. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah, totally. So some of the elements, though. I would add to this. The first thing it would be, I think that the original, um, the album has some more mid range yeah. going on. Okay. The EQ, and who knows if that was miking or if right. it was done on the board and yep. when they were mixing and they were adding. So, but it, you'll never know. But it's like it doesn't matter. You just try and use your ears and recreate yeah. it. So I'm going to add in on the aux now the EQ. Okay, so if I turn it off again. It's brighter and yeah. thinner, you know? With this, it's adding mids, and I'm actually, I'm actually rolling off the top end a bit. Okay, and you can actually go further even with it, but that really starts to take on more of the character of yep. the record to me. It's got this whole kind yeah. of like nasal, yep. you know, yep. thing that really helps it cut through the mix and kind of stay out of the way of everything else and yep. yet just be really special. Yeah. Know? There's this weird thing when you're um, mixing guitar and records that, you know, you, well, the frequency is of the different instruments are what really helps them besides panning and stuff yeah. sit in the mix. You know, yep. you can you can turn something up and it just starts taking over everything else. Right. You can't hear anything else, but yet it's not good. If yeah. with the frequencies are just right and it's carved out, you can pull things down in the mix a bit, but it just, because it's poking through because yep. of the mids, you know? Yeah. So this is one of those sounds. I mean, that just really has that character to me. <laughs> So, and the aux is terrific for kind of helping to nail this. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of compression because it's really in your face and okay. present and the compression helps to kind of do that. So adding the compressor. particular thing that you did on the compressor that like uh, I'm using um, you know it's it's probably only like compressing up maybe four or five DB at the most okay. when I'm hitting hard and I've got kind of a medium it's 1176 style compressor yeah. so it's got a fast attack anyway yeah. okay um, but I've got the attack set just kind of like almost as not well it's I guess it's at about 10 o'clock right yeah. now and then okay. the release is set as fast as it'll go okay and that's it and it's four to one and um, it just kind of works pretty good you know, if I turn it off, once again. It just yeah. pumps up the sound a bit and it just sticks it forward in your face. Yep. You know, it really helps okay. it. So that just makes it, you know, it starts to sound more like a record or yep. something, right? Um, and then what I'm gonna do is use the delay a little bit and I'm just gonna add a little bit of an echo like that. OK, 
Okay, now it's getting a little bit more ambience, and then I'm pretty sure there's probably reverb added yeah. on the record, probably a plate or something, okay. or you know who knows what they used. But what I did was I used, of course, the plate in the aux, and I'm adding, um, you know, it's it's mixed in and maybe like 15 or 20 percent or something like that, and I've got quite a bit of the treble rolled back. Okay, so I like darker. Yeah, reverbs. I do too. Yeah. yeah, so it doesn't you know pop yep. out too much. So you can hear the reverb. Nobody's going to laugh at you if you come no, in with that sound. No, dude, you know? you're done. I mean, you got the gig. Well, yeah. You can play it, right? Yeah. That's no, if, amazing. If I had to go and do it live, I yeah. would try and recreate the verb. Yeah. The, I would probably use a compressor pedal. Sure. And I would um, use use a bit of reverb in a pedal and stuff like yeah. that. Or, in, or just know, take your ox. Or just take your... Well, that's the other thing. If it, and, you know, that's the thing that I've never... You know, with this unit, you right. could take it out live and be doing that. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, uh, you know, if you really want to nail the sound. But it's like... I, I, you know, I geek out on this stuff so hard and I love it and it's yeah. fun. And I do remember Chris looking back at me the first week of rehearsal with, I remember what I was, you know, totally different rig, but dialing in the sound right. with a similar sort of mentality uh, and, you know, using a Line 6 roto machine for the rotary sound and probably a compressor and a divided by 13 amp that I had at the time and stuff. And he looked back at me and he goes, that sounds exactly like the record. Yeah. You know, and I always remember being like, Yes! Yeah, yeah, like, I'm doing my job, you know? <laughs> right, and, right. And, you know, because he was really stoked. And it, um, I would do the slide part with the, the you know, the, the overdrive and yeah. stuff and have that going. And then I would have to drop the slide and mm, slide down, drop it, and then go straight to the clean right. part and switch at the same time and stuff. And I did that probably like 300 times, I guess. Dude, we... <laughs> how, how was it the first time you were in the room and you heard him sing right in front of your face the first time? That well... <laughs> My audition was Freaking Spoon crazy. Man and Like a Stone. No and, way. Um, yeah, Cochise, like all these great songs. So that was, had to have been amazing. It was incredible. Just and, yeah, that they can do it. Like you know, you, there's that there's that thing of like you know when you're when you're on a stage and you're expecting it and, and you yeah. expect it because you're at a, a show, but like when it's like sometimes it's like dropping off the divided by amps, you, you'll see people in rehearsal and it's like it's mm. a small environment and you, and you take for granted because you're expecting a rock show. But like yeah. when you see them in that little environment, you actually hear it right in front of your face. It's like, yeah, my God, they can really do it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They can really do it. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. And you know, what I really felt that way too, was getting in because I was so kind of like, I don't know if it's like you're in shock when yeah. you first get a gig or something and then you're just kind of doing it. But there's moments of like, oh my God, I'm standing yeah. and playing this song, but that's the real guy. Yeah, singing. exactly. <laughs> I right. always say like being a, a sideman in bands is kind of like you're in a cover band except the real guy is right, singing. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. You know? That's funny though. So, and, and every now and then that really hits you and it's good to remember that. Like be yeah. present and really appreciate like, oh my God, I'm, that's some world class like action yeah. going on right well, over there. Well, it's an iconic time. person, an iconic band. Like how often is that? Get to happen. Yeah. Well, so a few, a few times. <laughs> well, it was the Cornell gig was really special because it was yeah. like that's right up my alley musically. Yeah. I mean, you know, so for me to be, it was perfect for me to be. I was like, oh wow, I can't believe I get to play these songs like yeah. in this form. I've I've done a lot of gigs with a lot of great artists, and I appreciate them all. You yeah. Know? But just you know, when something right. really is in your wheelhouse. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and that that one was so um so it was really special, but. Yeah, and, and I was going to say, when I really realized was a little bit later on when we would go do radio together. Because mm -hmm. we just do two acoustic guitars right. and go do a lot of these early. So I spent a lot of time yeah. like, going with him to go do radio stuff yeah. early in the morning and right. you know, appearances and stuff. Right. And we'd play like a stone or do different songs like solo acoustic. Yeah. And that was really fun. Oh, yeah, do, yeah, many times you'd yeah. be in a room like this size, just yeah. him and me, some headphones on. We'd be joking around before you go in the air. Right. And like, okay, when you're ready. We'd just talk about, yeah. you know, how are you doing? Oh, I'm tired. It's 845. Yeah, right, right. 645 or right. whatever it would be. And then you'd uh, you'd dive in and play, and then you're like, oh, this is so special. Like yeah. this guy's sitting right beside me singing right now. You know, yeah. just be like, this is I'm lucky. Ridiculous. Yeah, I'm just lucky ah! you're just like, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you do that? Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. All right, so let's dial another yeah. one up. Okay, let's do it. All right. So needless to say, we're both, uh, I, would, I think it's safe to say, Van Halen nuts. Uh, obviously, because you're... <laughs> Yeah. You've just played like 42 Van Halen songs, so obviously you're a fan. Um, <laughs> I love what, it. Where do we start? Because everyone's like, you know, this is the way to get the sound. This is, you know, and when you think about it back in the day, there wasn't a whole lot going on. And I think a lot of people forget that a lot of what you're hearing, not only was him as a player, but like 
you need to take for granted you're in the studio, you're like trying to get that Van mm -hmm. Halen one sound. So if we're gonna yeah. go after that and try to recreate something like that, there's obviously a little bit more involved than just plugging straight into your head and going, right? Well, the number one thing is the hands. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's the number one thing. Which no one's gonna have. You ha yeah, it's really <laughs> hard to play like him. Yeah. You know? And I'm such a fan of his and I have so much respect for him. And sometimes I almost feel like it's like I don't I think we're all celebrating his yeah. tone at this point and what he did. And, right. You know, it's like Hendrix and him. It's just like every you know, everybody wants to know how they did what they did. Yeah. Because it's so it turns you on so much when you're fourteen years yeah. old and you hear that stuff, you're like, Oh my god, I just wanna be able to do that. Yeah. So it's like it, ever since then it's still yeah. that you know, and when I hear those songs still on the radio, it They're fires me up in so the same good. way. It's They're still so good. It's ingrained in my brain. Yeah. You know, like, a, but um, but so the number one thing to get is the playing. That's yeah. the number one thing. It's not. And I remember back practicing, you know, his parts and stuff when I was a kid, and just like there was a lo another local kid in my neighborhood that was really good at, at right. it and his name is Jim and he was a, a really good guitar player and I, I'd be 14 or 15 and I saw Jim and he lit a fire in my ass to practice yeah and because it, it really was about he yeah. just had it in his hands yep. you know he was a fiery guitar player and he could kind of nail that and then you know and then of course like Steve Vai came out and yeah it was just an amazing time and kind of cool guitar playing right um and it was very exciting so yeah. um People don't, but. He, he gets celebrated so much for his leads, but people don't realize what a good right hand he had, because his rhythm playing is ridiculous. Oh my God, you it's know? Like, it's that's like, yeah. like, when, especially the, the isolated tracks is a very interesting thing, because when you listen to him play without yeah. the drums, you, you really get a chance to, to feel him like pushing and pulling and like, oh yeah. just how much he did with his hands to like get into the beat and like where he put, what he was doing in the beat. It's crazy listening to it because you're like, whoa, that's kind of tricky yeah. listening to it on its own. He was an incredible rhythm guitar player, yeah. and I compare a lot of, um, certainly the boogie stuff, you know, that they did and stuff, a lot of ZZ Top going on. Yeah, Billy Gibbons sure. is a great rhythm guitar player, yeah. too, as yeah. well as lead, you know? Yeah. And it's not just about, like, when you hit the note, it's about how long you hold the note yeah. and cut it off. Yeah. And he was master at that stuff. Totally. Um, definitely. Huge fan of his rhythm guitar playing as well as his lead guitar so playing. So good. So that's the number one thing, is the tone. Now, I always remember hearing a story that, um, and, and, you know, I, I know Ed a little bit, and yeah. I talk to him sometimes and stuff yeah. like that, and I've gotten the pleasure to sit there and watch him play, like, right in front of me a couple <laughs> right. times and stuff, and it's like... Whatever. And one, no, it's, it's, right. it's you know, to just... Yeah. It's very special, because he doesn't really play the guitar like anybody else. No, I remember uh, Tekka is telling me that one time he came, or uh, like one of his guitar techs that had toured with him, yeah. that he came and he put his arms around him one day while, while he was tuning his guitar up or whatever. Mm -hmm. Eddie came from behind him, and he put his arms around him, and he was pointing... Yeah. And that's when he really realized the way that he goes, oh my God, that's how you attack the string? Like yeah. With the pick, because all of a sudden it's Eddie's hands yeah. around him. Right. You know? And it was like a lesson. And, yeah. You know, but you know, you really have to, um, like we were talking about I'm the one. Yeah. You know, and to me, it's like. Yeah. Right. Like, and I'm not even going to, I'm playing with no amp for a reason, because I want right. you to hear the. Yeah. Like really, it's it's exploding yeah. the way he's hitting the strings. Yep. You know he's got a very so uh, hard to recreate. Yeah, and it makes the Marshall go when he plays it like that. It goes. Yeah. And it does it. You know what I mean? Where yeah. the amp goes. Yeah. And then it, it, it so settles initial, in. Yeah. It settles in. Yep, and it's yep. a very cool. Yeah. You know. You know it's funny. Yeah. Tim mentioned this because he he uh, Tim Pierce was saying he went to one of the rehearsals and he didn't realize how light he holds on to the pick. And so I watched him play. And I'm like. It's interesting because he doesn't, you know, like that kind of sound. You you think that he's like manhandling with this yeah. arm, and it doesn't seem to be like. You watch him play, and he's very like. It's I don't know through. what it is. It's his. It's because you when especially when he has the tremolo yeah. picking, he, he used to do this thing where yep. he bend his wrist and then go like this. But I swear, there's a hard pick attack thing going on with a lot of those early, yeah. you know, those rhythms and stuff. Yeah. Where it's like, so it could be a thing where, you know, like with a lot of drummers, where they look like they're going like this, but it's all in the wrist. <laughs> yeah. And all you hear is like, Bam! Oh, crack, oh, crack. Like my favorite drummers, they're just yeah. like, whatever, and the drums are just exploding. exploding yeah, exactly. You know? and I, I think it's a lot of that. Like yeah. It's just the snap yeah. and the, you know. But anyway, we'll, we can talk about that here in a minute when we get the, when we play <laughs> a little Van bit. Van Halen the, geeks, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So what do we? Okay, so so what we're gonna do here to get the sound similar to you know? Because once again, it's a, okay. Here's the other thing. He's very particular about his sound. Yeah. And out of respect for for that gentleman, I don't actually ask him about things. Yeah. You know, if I'm ever talking to him, I don't ask him about his yeah. guitar sound because it's like he. I think it's like you know we have to remember guitar players came from an era where they were. 
you know, you had to make your own thing. Yeah. And nowadays, everybody shares things on the yeah. internet. It's yeah, that's so funny. Can you share your presets? You yeah. Know? And it's like presets. And th back then, it was like, you know, he would turn around in the early Sacred days and ground. tap backwards because yep. he didn't want people to see what he was doing, you know? <laughs> tap with his back to the audience. Yeah. You can only do that for so long. Right, guess, exactly. But, but he, you know, I think he felt a certain amount of like, hey, this is my thing yeah, and I took thing. a long time to develop yep. it. And I can appreciate that. Yep. Nowadays, I get people asking me for like, hey, can you send me your Kemper presets right. of the SL68? Yeah. Because I've made some and it's yeah. like, Mm, you know, like it cost me a lot of money to like get all my mic pre's and <laughs> right. build a studio and mic everything and get it sounding great to the yeah. point where I made that thing and yeah. now I'm just kind of going to give you my yeah. studio and all right. that. And I, I have a mixed feeling. It's a Can mixed you tab that out for me too? <laughs> Can you? Yeah, yeah. Can you go to tabs for that, bro? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally. Yeah, so I yeah, get sure, his, all my free time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so I get his right. you know, there's a you gotta respect these yeah. guys. And in a modern band that's like that is Queens of the Stone Age. You know, they're yeah. very they're, Totally. Yeah, totally, just, totally. Kind of, you know, it's cool sound. Sacred ground. And, yeah, it's right. just and and so we do the best we can in trying to recreate the things. Um so let's so what are we using today? Well this is a uh, guitar that I bought off eBay that um some guy made, you know, I met him at NAMM actually a couple of years ago. He was a nice guy and he came up to me and goes, I sold you that guitar. And no that, way. Uh, but what it is, is it's parts caster with like canny and music craft parts. Okay. So the neck, bird's eye, maple neck, and it's yeah. got the hard ash body. Yeah. Just kind of like the Eddie yeah. guitar. That yeah. He, you know, and, um, and he painted it like blacky. Yeah. Guitar. So it's got the markings of blacky, but with all the Van Halen kind of parts. And I thought, okay. oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know, that's a unique. So I bought it, and it's it's a Motor City pickup in the bridge, and it's just exactly as the way I bought it, yeah. you know, off of eBay with the original Floyd from the 80s, and nice. that's it. So then this is running into this little guy over here, which we're just ex experimenting around with. I've had this for years. This is a Clinch FX EP Pre, and the EP Pre uh, aims to uh, basically recreate the preamp section only of an Echoplex, right. which I had to use. Yep. So. Kind of yeah. Neat. So this, so the, it, and it does. It doesn't have have a lot of gain, and it. it's like six dB of boost at the most, or something. Right. But it does this fattening. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. That it does. It actually affects the tone. Just it kind of broadens the yep. sound in a cool way, and it boosts a little bit. You know, if I turn it on and off, you don't hear a lot of hiss or more. It's not right. like oh, it's not yeah. boosting a ton or adding overdrive, yep. right? So anyway, but that uh, this is this is a cool uh, a cool box. So we're just gonna blend it in a bit. I got the the level on about half. And then I'm running into my Sur SL68, which is up there. And basically everything's on 10 except for the bass, because I like to go it back. Yeah. The traditional on 10. style, right? The traditional style. Turn it all on 10. And I've got the bass on maybe four or something right. like that. And I back the presence down just a hair, because it makes the amp a little more stable. Yeah. You know, right. They get crazy. Yeah. They get a little crazy. Yeah. The cool thing to note here, because I'm just leaving the, the, right. uh, the sound up all the way, but old Marshalls or style Marshall style amps. Can you still see me? Uh, Hello, I'm over here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll just move for a second. Well. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, so the presence. Oh, you right. hear that hiss, yeah. and that's the good stuff. You know, that's just. <laughs> and that's the, when it's on ten. You know, that's what makes that, it. Yeah. So that I just, I just take it down a hair to like eight and a half or whatever, and it just makes the amp a little more stable. Everything else is on ten. So mids. You know, bass is on four. Now, Presence do you have it in the, the very X mode? Yeah, they call it, it's a low voltage mode. Okay. So it was like, you know, as those things became more popular, it's like basically they, they put the built in, so you can run the amp at a, like a 90 volt setting with the proper bias. Yeah, well, proper explain bias. that part of the, the sound from back in the day, too, because I I mean, people might not know that either. But. Well, I think, you know, Eddie was the one who really originated it, for sure. He discovered that, um, that uh, oh, you're going to be cut out of there now. Can't work. I'm still here. <laughs> okay, so he discovered that uh, that basically, uh, you know, he could get a lower volume by dropping the the uh, the, the variable uh, uh, H AC, you know, kind of right. it's a, it's a varies the AC coming yep. out of the wall, and if he if he dropped the voltage going to the amplifier, the the the, the volume got a little yeah, lower, which makes exactly. sense because you're dropping all the voltages. Yeah, to the but didn't it didn't get kicked out. It, yeah, you wouldn't get kicked out. So essentially, it's like you know, you're maybe cutting the power of the amp in half by yeah. from 120 to 90 volts. Right. And it's a little lower volume. It's a little saggier, though. It affects yeah. the tone, too. It compresses so. in a certain way. It's really cool. Yeah, it's got a compression kind of thing. Yeah. A little softer sound, yeah. too. Yeah. It's a little less aggressive, actually, yeah. punchy. But yeah. it's in a really a really cool way. And I think other guitar players have discovered, you were mentioning that the Divided by 13, mm -hmm. uh, that Fred from yeah. Divided by is a big fan of that. Yeah, he has that exact Variac. And oh, I have yeah. one at my, at my house. And yeah. Yeah, the Variacs do, they do, uh, do, you don't think about it, but they, they do, if you're going to geek out, they, ah, they do sound different. See, you're, yeah. you're ready to rock. <laughs> they do sound different. Yeah. So anyways. Yeah. 
So yeah, so essentially it's, it's guitar into the EP pre, right in the front of the amp, which is cranked up, and then we're running into the aux. All right. Now the aux has a great preset that's called, uh, you really got something or other. So it's obviously a Van Halen style right. preset. Uh, you know, Eddie was sort of famous in the studio for using, um, uh, you know, 57s on the cabinets. Yeah. And that's it. And it was two 57s in different places. This this preset actually d has a 57 dialed up. We can see it here on the camera. And uh, and a 414 style mic with the lows cut. And then it's got some EQ on the 414 yeah, style show mic. Yeah, show them the difference of the... So, so, yeah. So, I'll just play a little bit here with the... Wait, let's, let's add each part. So, what's the head sound like just by itself? Okay. So, just without talking about that for a minute... <laughs> So, yep. you know, it's amp doing all the yeah. lifting. You yeah, know, that's lifting. what it is, all the heavy lifting. Now, the EP Pre's on too. Maybe we should turn that okay, on. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. It does this broadening it thing does. to the tone. Yeah. You know, everything in the chain affects everything. Yep. So you put pedals in line and, you yeah. know, especially back then there was no buffers and stuff. Yeah, right. It's like, you know, which I do have and there is a, my signal yeah. buffered right now because I'm running through long cables. Yeah. But, you know, back then and so... Radio Shack cord. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everything affected everything. Right. So, but this this definitely has a sound. I'll just dial the, the control on it up and down. Okay. The, 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 uh, the only control that's on it, which is reads volume. You, Part of the sound. I haven't used it for a while. So you can hear as I turn it way up wow. there, it gets broad yeah, and has this meaner. Great. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I like it kind of, you know, on five or six or something. Yeah. All right. Mean guitar yes, sound, right? Yeah, it's wicked. Yeah, so, okay. Um, so what are we gonna talk about next? Let's talk about the mics and stuff here in the aux preset. So I'm gonna uh, bypass everything except for the SM57 sound now what they, what they were trying to do in the uh in the early days is have the guitar panned left and then the reverb right. so this preset emulates that okay, it was cool. kind of fun to dial it up and it's got the reverb but i don't have the reverb on right now and that's why you're hearing the guitar skewed left okay you know so anyway here's the 57 kind of skewed to the left a little bit <laughs> Okay, and let's add in the other mic here, which is 414. Okay, which is pretty fun. And it's got some EQ yeah, on it, and on it. we're seeing it right now, and they're boosting the top end. Now, I think on the first album that Eddie used, uh, there's photos from back yeah, in the day. What's the big with the EQ pedal? Well, okay, so there was that. I don't. I'm not convinced he used those in the studio. Okay. But he did use cabinets that had JBLs, I think. Oh, uh, so right. There's pictures of those early cabinets that he used that had yeah. two JBLs in the top with aluminum dust caps and uh, and uh, two Celestians in the bottom. So the high end comes from that. I think so. Okay. All right. Okay. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but I think Such so. is the lore. Okay, all yeah, right. Because there right. was photos right after those cabs. Those were the cabinets he was using yeah. back then. And quickly after that, you saw those speakers disappear. Okay. And, you know, <laughs> and he mentions in interviews and things like that that he was never really happy with the tone of that record. Yeah. It wasn't the sound that he wanted in, in his head exactly. So he was always tinkering and trying different things. Yeah. But anyways, I think that's what they're trying to kind of maybe emulate in this okay. aux preset. Right, some got of that, it. Some of that sizzly yep. top end. Yep. You know? <laughs> By the way, I got a gate on too because I got so much in it. There's yeah. a, when I sit in this position here, it's a little noisy. So the gate is helping keep in the pickup buzz under control a little bit. Okay, they've got some room mics as well mixed in. So I'm just going to add those. And then we're going to add the creme de la creme, the special uh, secret sauce, which okay. is the, uh, the reverb. <laughs> Okay, so that's that the, makes such, that 
thing. Also the room I keep coming back to it makes such a big difference on the ox. The rooms? Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. Lending some yeah. air. Yeah. Yeah. Really realistic, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now let's add in the, the, the plate verb. Now this is the magic and this is what, this is one of the great things about the ox because the plate verb is um, pretty exceptional. Yeah, and it is really, really good. UA, they yep. did an amazing job on this kind of stuff. And this was a big part of that early um, Van Halen sound, yeah. for sure, you know? Um. And there it is, folks. Reverb pan to the right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it pretty great. Show, show that riff really quick. So See, that's what people don't realize that he threw in open strings all the time. Yeah, it's, it's the same riff from the intro of Eruption. Yeah. But up two frets. Yep, yep. So this, so is, this is the solo from I'm the One. And what makes it, it's really aggressive once again when he hits the open string yep. and it's got this. Right. <laughs> that, the funny thing, that particular part of that yeah. solo though, that's one of the things where when people are like, why do you like Van Halen so much? I'm like, listen to the vibrato in that particular run, that very end run that's like that, you know, pentatonic run. Oh, the... the uh... And it's like yeah. just that fire that he, and he keeps it going and you can tell it's just all, you know, they play it just right then and there. And then yeah. Just like and just his ability to have a ripping rhythm like that pocket and then to switch into lead playing and have all that finesse. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, and the mixture of the, the note choice too, which was sort of all, a lot of pattern based stuff, but it's like the mixture of major and minor stuff yeah. is so, so special. Good. You know when he... Yeah. Like the major third. So that riff comes. <laughs> yeah, and it's so, so I love the, uh, that exactly. whole thing is yeah. so cool. It's you know? so him. Yeah. yeah which oh, is hit the phase 90 for me for a minute there, is which that, is uh, on four. Four? Yeah, so if we do. <laughs> that was great. Oh wow, that's doing a so good. It's, it's probably not playing nice with the EP pre right, right now. It's so right. making a little buzz, but that still sounded cool. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What was so, the other one with the echo on it? Which oh right, right, right. So if you hit seven, all right. Yeah. Listen. No, next one. This one. Yeah. There we go. And then we can do. But Dude. that was fun. <laughs> so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that stuff so much, man. That is, yeah. I mean, how could you not be inspired, right? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a, look at we're like kids. Yeah? <laughs> we totally. talk about this stuff. I don't know. It was just such fun guitar playing. It know? is. Um, there's a you know what I love about it too is the element that's so punk rock. Yeah. Like when I played last week, we did uh, the song uh, "Hang 'Em High" with yeah. Glenn Sobel. That I, I did it at the the Lucky Strike here in L.A. And it was so fun, dude, because it was like. Um, I've never played that song live. Right. And I had to come out, walk out on stage, plug into the amp, and just kind of. Well, whatever. 
I tried to grab the bar. The bar on this keeps slipping backwards yeah, and sticking so in the funny. dumbest position. Yeah. But anyway, you get the point. My yeah. point was, I sort of, I started the riff right now, and I probably played it about that well live, right. which is almost a little sloppy. Right. Like I don't, but you're like, ah, it's like driving through a snowstorm. Like you just gotta go into it. You know. And, you know, it's God, this bar is driving me bonkers. But anyway, um, uh, don't yeah. need to tab all that out. Yeah, I'll tab that out. <laughs> I'm gonna tab that. But yeah, I love the point. It's like. Yeah, like they were just on on, on they fire. were on fire. They just were on like, fire. You know, just going for it. No and, it and it can be a little sloppy and it's almost better. Yeah. Like you just do it and then if you're falling off the train and then you get back yeah, on, you know. Yeah, like, gets riding. Well and the crazy thing is that they could run around and freaking do the splits and jump and the thing he used to do when he would run and he would slide on the knee pads and then like just yeah. straight up on the monitor. You're like, oh really, God. dude? Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. So yeah. We're Van geeks. All right, we've admitted it. That was so much fun. Okay. Talking about that. Well, dude, that was that was amazing. That so was fun. Freaking, isn't Eddie the best? <laughs> yeah. Come by anytime. We'll geek out on this stuff. It's so I love it. Yeah. So, but wait, wait. I mean, you're you're literally like a one stop shop when it comes to Pete Thorne signature stuff. So give us give us a rundown. And by the way, check his links down below because you got. An album too. I right? got a new album out. Uh, What's it called? It's not super new, but it came out about you know it's eight months ago now, I guess, okay. or something. Pete Thorne two. Okay. Uh, and it's uh, somebody was like, call your album Pete Thorne two, like Van Halen two, Led Zeppelin two. And I was like, right. that's great. Yes, yes. Problem solved. Because coming up with album titles and song titles is my worst. But um, it's everywhere. It's on Spotify, and uh, I hate Spotify, but it's on CD Baby. Yeah. <laughs> I like CD Baby. Right. Uh, Apple Music. Uh, okay. You know, it's, it's out everywhere. Okay. Amazon, I'll so. leave a link in the description box. Check it out, and I'll leave a link to all of his stuff too. So sweet. Amp and guitar. Let's go quick. Let, let, what is it? So, sir, I've been associated with for quite a while. Uh, John Sir's a good pal of mine, one of my best friends. And yeah. So it's, a, it's a great thing because, you know, I get to work close with a, a, a guy that's, a, I mean, a legend and he's right. a genius and he's also a great pal. He's just a great dude. So right. um, I love working close with a company that's like, not huge, but not small. Either. Right. You know, they're nice. Yeah. You know. It's the guy down the street still. Yeah. I mean, I can drive there. Yeah. It, it takes me an hour and 20 minutes from right. here, but, you know, but I can drive there right. and go there and see him. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, we can, we can collaborate on things. So I've yeah. got the signature Thornbucker pickups, which are in this guitar, which is also my signature model. Okay. Guitar. So wait, let me ask you um, about the pickups. Yeah. Are they based off of anything in particular or like? Kind of PAF ish. Okay. All uh, right. In the, you know, we wanted basically a low output PAF style pickup, but that was really balanced. Oh, really low output. Clear. I yeah. Love the low output thing. I don't think people realize how cool the low output thing is too. Yeah. Well, you're not painting yourself into a corner with, right. with the output that's smashing yeah. the front end. Of it. Right, right, right. There's, there's boost pedals for that. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. There's, there's other ways you can do that, but the clarity is always compromised if you go too hot in the pickups, I find. Okay. There's always other ways to get gain and distortion. Sure. So with the pickups, you know, we, we wanted a very balanced, clear set that kind of, you know, with some of that, a lot of the 70s thing, Jimmy Page kind of tones going on, yeah. you know, where you hit the middle position oh, and it's kind so of cool good. and almost with a single coil like thing, a bit yep. of that quality, but it's still humbucking. So, yeah. um, so that's the thorn bucket, just a really balanced set of old school kind of uh, pickups with okay. some clarity and also warmth. That we used a different magnet in the bridge pickup than the, than the neck pickup. Interesting. Uh, for, so, what's, what's up with that? Well, it, it has a, uh, and I'll really attribute this to my friend Gil Yaron, who makes beautiful guitars, but he turned me on to using an Alnica 4 in the bridge and a 5 in the neck. Okay. Which is, um, the 5 gives you a little more bass and treble, a little more okay. sparkle in the top end, and the 4 has this really balanced tone to me. Nice. Like where the mids are right in balance with the bass and the so what happens is that when you go up high on the high E string yeah. with gain, you can hit a note up there and and it and it doesn't sound shrill. Rip um, your face off. Sometimes yeah. I find with a five, might be what you want for certain sounds, yeah. that shrill thing. But for other sounds, you can be a little much. And then maybe you're dialing your amp with the treble back a bit because the pickup right. can be a bit bright yeah. if it's an Alnico five, and then your neck pickup starts sounding. Right, better, right. You know? Yeah. So with the four in the bridge and the five in the neck, there's this balance where you can hit all three positions. And, you know, I once heard Scott Anderson say he rolls the tone control down on his bridge pickup mm -hmm. a lot on his, he's a single quote yeah. pickups, but he likes them to sound almost like he didn't change pickups when yeah. he changes, you right. know, uh, just a slight variation yeah. in the tone. And I, I feel like I get that. Like, and that's with the humbuckers, we kind of maybe, you know, through the magnets and stuff. And then also just the other design of the pickups, we achieved this really great balance. Nice. So that's a nice thing in this guitar. All right. Yeah. Sweet. And yeah. then amp. So the amps, um, PT100 has been out for a number of years now. It's a hundred watt, three channel. You know, there's one behind you, there, the rack, one of the one of the older models. But um, we're coming out with a new 15 watt uh, that we just introduced at NAM. It's 15 watts, three channels, 
and has some really cool features like built-in Sur Reactive load box and impulse responses. Come on. Yeah, so you can take a DI out right out of the amp, go right to the console, get great mic'd up. So is it essentially like what this is built into the amp? That's right. Sur Reactive load essentially built into the amplifier with, uh, it's a a very, very similar device that has, you know, impulse response, 16 of them that you can put in there. Wow. It comes comes loaded with them, but you can put your own in if you want. So you can get like an insane amount of tonal variations with between the two, the three channels and... Yeah, 16. <laughs> 16 IRs, and you can wow. actually store per channel in the amplifier what IR you want on no per channel. No way. Sure, so for, for your clean sound, if you want an open back 410 or something, yeah. and for your dirty, if you want to close back 412, green That's back. That's crazy. Whatever. Yeah, so it's really a neat, uh, like for, you know, great mic'd up cabinet tones going to front yeah. of the house or for recording and stuff. It's wow. Really, it's even got a headphone amp built in. No way. Same, same headphone amp. So you just plug in phones and you can just, you know, you can jam backstage with this amp. Okay. No cab, yeah. no low, you don't need anything. Just plug it in, rock out, pop out on stage, put it yeah. down on a cabinet if you want to use yeah. a cabinet or just go direct to the front of the house, whatever you want to do. It no just gives you way. all this versatility. We're trying to give people the the kind of versatility that you can get out of modeling and stuff like that, yeah. but in a still easy real, system. yeah, because yeah. it's the, there is a difference. The simplicity, <laughs> even if the tones are great, the right. simplicity of yeah. a tube, just the knobs being yeah. right, you know, it's just yeah. so, you know, I, I still love tube amps. They so, smell good. Yeah, they do. Uh, right? or <laughs> it exactly. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do a demo of the, the amp already? It's on my channel. Okay. We'll put the link in the yeah. I'll put the link in the description box. Awesome. Well, dude, thank yeah. you. That was a treat, back. man. Hey, thanks for and uh, make sure to chime in on the, the uh, comment section or whatever and let us know what you uh, what you want to know. All right. Let's do more soon. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Catch you next time. See you guys. Right. Sweet. <laughs>